Live and direct. Right, right, right. It's Sway in the morning. Right here on Shade 45. Right. Eight minutes into the hour, we got a very special guest joining us for Celebrity yep. Wire. Yep, Hillary Crossley. She's a staff writer over at Jezebel.com. Yep, yep. Okay, what you got, Tracy G? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to start off with the messy life of Woody Allen. So we know that his adopted dollar daughter, Dylan Farrell, she wrote an open letter, mm-hmm. and she was de- detailing all of these molestation claims. And now Woody Allen, he came back with his own little penned open letter, and he's saying that his daughter has been used as a pawn for revenge against him, and this has all been formed by his estranged former partner, Mia Farrow, and that she did this out of jealousy for him leaving her for his other adopted daughter. So now, this one, Dylan is still coming out and saying it doesn't matter what her father writes. This truth is still the truth. So they're still going back and forth. However, something to keep in mind that's even crazier is there was a panel of psychologists appointed by U.S. prosecutors, and they have concluded that she was never molested. How did they conclude that? Does it say? No, it doesn't say, but I guess something to do with... You biological think, you, you think Heather, doctor you, you things. Think, you think he's a pervert, Heather? What do you think? Yes, I think he's a pervert, and here's why. It, it says nothing. What about Sunyi? What about the, the daughter that him and Mia Farrow adopted that yep. he ended up marrying? There had to be something going yes. on in that house before they got married. Then there's the son who wrote a letter and came out. Mm-hmm. What do you mean a pawn? Who writes molested, like, letters about my father rape me yeah. is a porn thing. Like, who does that? You, would you ever, if you were adopted, hypothetically, Hillary, would you ever <laughs> think as a child you would marry your father? Yo, that whole story is so ridiculous. Right. Like, there's the, what is the the most deaf line? It was like, show Woody and Sunyi at the playoff game. Like, yeah, that's actually happening. And people are fine with it. And it's the weirdest thing. Like, yo, if I, uh, if I, like, married someone and, didn't decided to leave them for their child. Yeah, mm-hmm. their child. Yeah. Like somehow that's cool if I made like Annie Hall because yeah. the movie was great. And, you, you know, <laughs> Blue Jasmine and Kate Blanchett. I mean, goddamn. Would you stop watching his films now? <laughs> See, that's the struggle that I have. Yeah. Like, is it when Step in the Name of Love comes on? Should I sit down like every single time? Like even at the old people party? Like, what if my mom <laughs> is retiring? Then what? Like, is is this not the jam? Like, that's the kind of struggle in terms of separating the art from the artist. And I'm always kind of jostling with that. I like how she brought a step in the name of love. Mm-hmm. Because of the opinion it's kind, it's the Kelly. same thing. Oh, like Kelly. You saw the video. We <laughs> all saw the video. I didn't see the video, Hillary. Lies. R. <laughs> <laughs> R. Kelly didn't make it hard for us. Now moving into the music world with Mace. So Harlem World legend, of course, from Bad Boy. And recently he was doing an interview and he was talking about this new generation of rappers and folks that he likes. He likes Drake. He likes Kanye. And then he went into J. Cole and he was like, you know what? That kid gets my cosign. But then he added this. He said, I, I like J. Cole when he's not taking shots at me. I saw him one day. I was going to hit him, but I felt like I was too grown to be knocking light-skinned people out. But I really like him as an artist. And then he wanted to, went on to continue saying, in our generation, if you just said something on record, we went on and put action. But when I saw him, I realized he's just a little kid, so I just let it fall back. Mace could beat J. Cole. Is J. <laughs> is J. Cole is kind of tall, right? Yeah, and he ain't scared to punch, as we remember when he was punched on um, somebody at a, at that party. Uh, Puffy, what, who that, what that was that? rude. Yeah, <laughs> he, 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 he they had to carry J Cole out. Heave ho. Well, was, 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 was May serious though when he said this, or did he say it in jest? No, he was dead serious. I mean, he gave a little giggle at the end, but you know mm-hmm. when you just put that laugh, that cackle, it's like, nah, really, I'm serious. You think that would help his career, Hillary? Like get, getting back in, not that he needs help, but that would be a great way to re-enter the, you know, the, the, the game, right? What I want to know is what does the mother's board think about this? The like, mo- is there is there a men's and women's day that's being sponsored by the fight between <laughs> J. Cole and, and Pastor Mace? Like, I, I don't understand why he's not at church somewhere and why he has time to be worried about what 15-year-olds are talking about not that j cole is that young but like in the grand scheme of how old mace is yes like that's my struggle and mace I don't, is old how mace old is mace mace is old to be in rap beef like if if jeezy and rick ross are squashing things like it's too it's too late for mace to start wow beef. mace i'm so sad <laughs> <laughs> i like okay. mace now going into the hollywood world shia labeouf now he's been known to be a bad boy in that sector of entertainment and he has a new movie coming out called nymphomaniac so he was overseas doing his press con- press conference and when he was asked a simple question which was okay how did it feel to do the sex scenes do you think that people in america are just uncomfortable of sexuality mm-hmm. this is what he said. 
when the seagulls <laughs> follow the trawler, <laughs> it is because they think sardines will be thrown into the sea. Thank you very much. <laughs> And that was his grand exit. And FYI, that's a famous quote from a French soccer player. But still, he looked crazy when he was sitting down there. It looked like he had clothes that had never been washed in like a year. And then when he went on the red carpet, he was dressed to the nines, had his suit on, but then had a brown paper bag over his head that said, I am no longer famous. Wow. Britney moment. Yep. Britney moment. Feels like we're headed towards meltdown territory. You don't think so, Heather? Absolutely not. I think it's all about publicity. Uh-huh. I, I, this kid started out, if you remember, a long time ago on an HBO special, Project Greenlight, yeah. that was executive produced by Matt Damon and, and Ben Affleck. He he knows what to do. What now, do here's you? the question. Is he having a nervous breakdown before our very eyes? Heather says no. Nope. Tracy, you say. I say, you know what? I've seen it with Britney, so I know what this looks like. Hillary, what do you say? I don't think so. You don't think so? I think he's got too much money and he's bored. Wow. I wish I had that problem. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right, we got Chris Lee on the line from Louisiana. <laughs> Chris Lee, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> How hey, you doing? what's up? I am so glad to be here. It's an honor. Thank you. Oh, wow. You're a citizen. A sway in the morning. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. You know y'all don't get a boo much love. Thank no, you there, so much. There it is. There it is. So you, you worked around someone who had a nervous breakdown? Yeah, actually, it was myself. It was me. Oh. <laughs> Damn, psycho. What I, happened? Uh, yeah, yeah, I didn't really know what was going on. I've always been a bitch, so, you know, to kind of gauge me by that was off. But co-worker had been throwing me under the bus, had been, had been, had been a lot going on. She'd even made a couple of personal comments about my marriage. Oh, man, uh, yeah, yeah. Her phone just had a nervous breakdown. Um, <laughs> yeah, so let's get into Jeezy and Rick Ross's business. Because you remember, they used to have some beef back in 2010. And then in, I believe, 2012, BT Hip Hop Awards, they got into a scuffle. Then in the aftermath, what did uh, Rick Ross say? That he was very tempted to choke out Jeezy. Yeah. yeah. So now in 2014, TMZ is saying that T.I. told them that he had a heart to heart with Jeezy and got him to see that he had taken his eye off the ball. He was focusing on bad blood rather than what was important, making money. Jeezy then saw the light, and Rick Ross ended up seeing things the same way. So not only did they bury the hatchet, they agreed to work together on a new Ross track called War Ready. Yeah. So they patched it up. The bromance is back. I'm happy about that. Hillary, what do you think? I don't believe it. I still think they would have shank each other. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> I call bullshit immediately. Well, you're listening to Sway in the morning. On Shay 45.